My name is Kath Dyson. I am a resource teacher of learning and behaviour. Um, I've been in this role now for five years. Prior to that, I was in a college setting. And prior to that, I was in an area school. So all in all, I've been in education for, I think, 27 years. Um, and last year became an advisor for Altogether Autism. I got into education by default, really. Um, my all my immediate family were teachers, and I swore I would never be a teacher. That was I was adamant. And I did my degree, I did my masters, and then I sat and looked at this degree and masters, and I had no idea what I was going to do with an English and sociology degree and a masters in Victorian studies. <laughs> um. And I thought about being um, a curator because I liked writing. I thought about being a librarian because I like books. And then I just thought, nah, all right, I'll do teaching. <laughs> and um, it, it just came very, very naturally. I just, I, I just, I just got it. I just got it really early on. So I was teaching for 23 years, 22 years. And in the last couple of years, I had the opportunity to work with an RTLB and realized that, that this was something I was really interested in. And I've always been drawn to the students who struggle for whatever reason, and particularly the students um, who really can't access education. And I saw my this role as being a way to to support that kind of student. It was interesting that I didn't even consider that it would be a transition, but it was a transition. Um, so my diagnosis, um, I'm autistic. My diagnosis was very late. So I had no idea how much I had been relying on all of the things that schools and any institution gives you. So I was trained essentially um, to respond to bells and timetables, uh, structure, routine, and went from that to a job where I was allowed to create my own week and schedule my own meetings, organize my own time. And to be honest, it was really, really hard. Um, the, the hardest part, well, all in all, was, was and is the time management. I really struggle to create my own timetable, but I've got tips and tricks now that I um, use and I can share with other people, of course. In terms of uh, cognitive load, I I definitely do struggle with the with a day and a week. Um, so, for example, if I'm working with a teacher, I will try and do that in the morning because that's when I'm at my most fresh, and um, leave less taxing things to later in the day. So, one thing that I I now know I need to do is work backwards. So, if I need to be somewhere, I I rewind and work back to, um, you know, to, to where I'm coming from and how long it's going to take and all of those things. And usually I can do it very well. I can certainly do it very well professionally, but personally I seem to still struggle. Um, but it, 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 it does actually continue to be hard. But, but if I have a system, like I said, to, to work backwards, that does actually help. Um, and I also give myself as much time either side of meetings as I can. Otherwise, I'm literally running from one meeting to another and my brain can't cope with that. So I'm learning that what my brain needs and I'm, I'm slowly but surely um, getting it right. I remember when I first started in this role, I would literally just stare at my blank calendar. I did not know where to start and nobody knew how hard it was for me. I just wish I'd asked for help. I just wish I'd been able to say, actually, I really struggle with time. Um, but I didn't know I was autistic. So I thought it was my, 
problem and I presumed that everyone else found it really easy. And actually now, because I'm a manager now within my um, role, I help other people to manage their calendars. So it's actually, it's not just me, it's other people as well. I think it depends on perception because a barrier to someone might actually be an advantage or a strength to someone else. So for example, I am very direct and some people don't like that. I'm not rude, but I will certainly say if I think something isn't um, as it should be, um, I guess I've got um, good personable skills despite being autistic. So I can frame it in a way that's very respectful. Um, I actually see that as a strength, but some people might see that as a barrier. I uh, really struggle to concentrate or get actually get any work done in a group setting. So we the way that we work is we have very open plan offices. Um, so before I became a manager, uh, and I've now got my own office, but prior to that, I was in a public space, i.e. a shared space, and it just did not work for me. So I had to be brave and talk to my manager and actually say, I need my own separate space because I can't get any work done and that yeah I, I was brave and I did do it and, it, and I, I got what I needed but um some people would not understand that I think the way that I connect with students is probably a bit different to other people and that's possibly with my directness so I will I will say things initially that are probably quite left field but very quickly the student understands that I'm coming from a place of care and um, safety and I think that's always been an asset in my job I've always been able to form relationships really quickly I'm a really good judge of character and and students trust me which sounds bizarre but they don't always trust all of their teachers but they and I guess it's because I am me I am only ever me I can't pretend um and I'm very open and I'm very honest um I've also got a really strange not strange I've got a strong sense of humor because that's just what I do and I find that's a really good way to connect with students and also how to learn if if they're relaxed and feeling safe and laughing, they're in a position then to learn. Um, I think also being able to see the big picture. So I, I'm a secondary teacher by trade, so I could see a whole lesson in my head and I knew exactly where I was starting and where I wanted to end up by the end of that lesson. And again, I think that's probably unique to, well, it's not, it's not always what all teachers do. I can actually see it in my head. I can visualize where I need them to be. And I can also see every individual in a class in terms of where they will be or should be. Um, I think another strength that autistics have, and certainly I have, is that I am able to see the big picture, but then drill down into the detail and zoom back out again. And that's so helpful in meetings where you're listening to lots of different information and you do need to see the big picture, but then essentially you need to form some kind of plan. Um, and I just seem to be able to do that. And I'm pretty sure it links to my um, visual memory or mind. I can just see it in my head. And, and it's a, such a good skill to have because it enables action, which is what we all want out of a meeting. I am in a very privileged position in that I can start alongside a, a student and a family who may well end up with an autism diagnosis. And I have had the privilege whereby that has happened in a number of occasions where I have picked up, we call it picking up a student. I've picked up a student, done the scoping, gathered the data then brought that to the parent and 
nine times out of 10, the parent know that something is a little bit different and that then enables me to support them um, along that journey. And I have seen students for whom they were the odd board, <laughs> the, the one who um, sat in the library, the one who didn't understand how to get on with other children in the playground. And I've seen them transformed, not, not through anything I've done, but just through their own growth and understanding when they've had when they've got that diagnosis coupled with their parents understanding and you then have a, a lovely three-way partnership um and I'm I then step out of that so it becomes a really strong partnership between home and school so to know that I've I've been a part of that journey for a number of young people is, is it's absolutely um um well, it's just so precious. Yeah, it is, it's very professionally rewarding. And I can't think of many other roles in education where where what you do within the space of probably six months is literally life-changing for some students. Um, I think the other success I've had is I've worked with a lot of girls and I find that girls are often undiagnosed or misdiagnosed in terms of autism. And I've had a lot of success with, um, yeah, with, I guess, identifying potential neurodiversity in, in girls. My advice would be look to yourself first before you even begin to envisage what it might be like to be a teacher um, in terms of personality or, uh, and skills you need the biggest amount of patience in the world to be a teacher and students respond and respect that students know if you've got patience and if you will keep coming back with more patience